Imagine you get so good at Japanese that you don't even think in your native language anymore. I want that for you. So I've well done my years of learning Japanese into a four-step formula that anybody can follow. And by the way, you'll have to take notes because we're going way deeper than what learning apps cover because Japanese is so much more than that. Trying to learn Japanese can open up a whole new world of opportunities, allowing you to connect with one of the most unique cultures in the world. But it can also leave you with months of wasted time, hundreds of dollars wasted, and countless shattered dreams. Sadly, the route that most learners go down is one that preys on a learner's time and money. They try and tell you that the only way to improve is to spend more time on their apps and more money on their courses. Out of the hundreds of Japanese learners that I've met, only a few don't fall victim to this trap. Meanwhile, the rest slowly give up as they make little to no progress. There's a good chance I'm even describing your exact situation. Trust me, I have been right there with you at some point in time. But if you understand the foundation of learning Japanese, you'll realize that you never need to spend another second doubting whether or not you're making progress ever again. It may sound obvious saying that you need to understand the foundation of Japanese in order to properly understand a language. But there's one thing that you're probably missing that 99.9999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999
You know how I mentioned earlier that the most important thing you can do in Pillar 1 is build a massive vocabulary pool of the most essential Japanese words? Well, what if I told you that by learning these words through kanji, you could increase the speed of your Japanese learning by up to twofold? You see, by learning words through kanji, you not only learn a bunch of kanji, but the words you learn through them become a lot easier and a lot faster. And if you're wondering why learning words through kanji is the best path, let's think about it through this situation. Okay, so actually, if you learn 10,000 words in Japanese just through speaking, listening, hiragana, and katakana, you will begin to build a reliance on these senses. This reliance takes a long time to build, and I like to refer to it as your active and passive sense of understanding. Actively understanding Japanese takes a lot less time than passively understanding Japanese. Still don't understand? Don't worry, I'm gonna make this as clear as possible. Active understanding refers to your understanding of the language when you're actively thinking of it and trying really hard to remember the knowledge. This works for simple understanding, sure, but chances are you won't be able to understand a lot of media unless you replay it over and over. And you probably won't be able to speak unless you spend an awkward amount of time thinking about what you're about to say. An active understanding can be built in as little as one time after seeing a new word. But let's be real here, when learning new languages, everybody overlooks just how powerful passive learning can be. When one has a passive understanding, they can understand a language while barely thinking about it and they can speak it with little effort. After years of passive learning, people can get so good that they catch themselves thinking in Japanese. A passive understanding can take hearing or seeing a word from anywhere from a few to hundreds of thousands of times. And yes, when I say hundreds of thousands, I mean it. For example, being able to successfully distinguish ha and ga not only takes many instances of encountering it, but the encounters must be distanced over a long period of time. The exact same thing can be said about kanji. If you use kanji as the key to learning Japanese, you can easily get 2000 kanji to a passive state in your mind. So how do you do this? Well, I said pillar two is extremely important to pillar one and it ties into it perfectly, and that couldn't be closer to the truth. If you want to speed up your progress in pillar one, you must start learning kanji immediately after learning these new vocabulary. So how do you do this? Well, there's a few ways you can approach this method. For those of you who want to take a slower approach, you can replace the core 2K deck that I mentioned earlier with a kanji vocab deck. There are plenty available in Anki for free, but if you want a great way that is streamlined and does most of the work for you, I highly recommend Wanikani. It is a paid application, but it's extremely good. I honestly wish, like, this video was sponsored by them because right now I'm just promoting it for free, but it's a really good resource. It's probably the best I found. It acts very similar to many of the free decks on Anki, but it makes it way more straightforward and a lot more interactive, as you need to manually input each of the answers. For those of you who are more serious, I recommend doing a core 2k deck and a kanji deck like Wanikani simultaneously. I personally just did Wanikani on its own. I didn't do the core 2k deck or anything, but I still got great results. However, the results were limited. It wasn't until the next pillar that I could confidently say I knew a little bit of Japanese. Remember how I mentioned passive learning earlier? Well, immersion is the absolute pinnacle of passive learning. Immersion is when you start to treat Japanese like your native language. Start playing video games in Japanese, listening to Japanese music, reading Japanese books, switching your phone to Japanese. The options are endless. The idea is that you dodge your native language like it's the plague, because every time you engage with it, you're wasting time that you could be instead spending on Japanese. You can take immersion as seriously as you can handle. Some people will be having a heart attack and they'll refuse to call an ambulance in fear that the dispatcher accidentally speaks English to them. I recommend you stick to immersion in a level where you reach something called comprehensible input. This is basically the point where you don't necessarily understand every word, but you understand what's going on. You don't want to overwhelm yourself and not know what's going on. You still want to enjoy the media that you're consuming. The goal of passive learning isn't to strain yourself. It needs to be something that you can handle doing every day. Honestly, the greatest part about immersion is that Japanese has some of the most readily available resources to do so. It only takes about five clicks to change your phone to Japanese, and there's a lot of anime, manga, movies, and music out there. I personally recommend you start immersion learning after learning about a thousand of the core 2K cards because that'll make the transition a lot smoother. At the beginning, I recommend you consume mainly the stuff that young children do in Japan. It may feel weird, but the secondhand nostalgia is real, and there's a lot of it anime, like Pokemon and Doraemon that are still pretty entertaining as an adult. You can actually use this website called JPDB that will help you rank anime difficulty. I personally don't recommend going above three out of 10 until you're like really feeling yourself. And there's thousands of good anime that are under three out of 10. But to be honest, if you still wanna watch a really difficult show, then just go for it. It'll be a lot more painful to consume, but it'll keep your motivation high. And that's the most important thing when you're learning a new language. Now is when I'll introduce the real trick to Pillar 3. If you do this extra active step alongside immersing, you will improve even faster. This is what nerds in the Japanese community like to call sentence mining. So if you want to sentence mine, the first thing you have to do is find comprehensible input within media. And the media needs to consist of finding a sentence that has one unknown word, sometimes multiple. 
as long as the sentence is still understood with the definition of such unknown words. Second, you take either a picture or audio of the chosen sentence. And third, you send the sentence to an SRS flashcards program such as Anki. Okay, so you're probably wondering how to do this now. Well, don't worry because there are many ways that have been developed by the community so that you can do this quickly. The most popular software to achieve sentence mining is ABS Player and yomi -chan. In fact, yomi -chan is what Mutt vs. Japan used to make his flashcards. He did 10 a day for many years. And the last popular mining software is called Migaku, which is what I personally use. Migaku, please sponsor me. This is the only time I'm shouting you out for free. Please sponsor me. Make me give me money. So yeah, you just use one of these mining tools and this is what people like to refer to as the end game for active learning in Japanese. And to be honest, you could just click off here and take all the advice I've given you and you would be set up to master Japanese with this advice alone. But if you really want to know the secret sauce, there's one pillar left. This final pillar is for those who want to take Japanese a little bit more seriously. What I'm about to teach you is the absolute peak of what is possible in Japanese learning. The final pillar is notoriously extremely difficult in the Japanese community and it takes years to master. You may have to be extremely mentally ill in order to do this pillar, but this is by far the pillar that will skyrocket your learning the most. Ajat. All Japanese. All the time. You can't make this name up. This is the absolute pinnacle of reaching excellency in Japanese. It's also the point where you will probably lose your mind over this language. The idea behind Aja is that you're not only immersed in your free time, but all of your time. Of course, it helps to move to Japan and forsake English altogether, but you can do this just as effectively anywhere on Earth. The way I used to do it was by playing dialogue from anime in my earbuds anywhere from 12 to 16 hours a day. And if you're feeling extra wild, you can sacrifice your sleep to get a full 24 hours by playing your anime on a speaker, which I used to do a little bit. But the great thing about doing this is that the sentences that you listen to can come from the flash cards that you're actively studying and your time listening will make the flashcards ingrained in your head much quicker. Aja and flashcards are honestly like the bread and butter of learning Japanese. They complement each other perfectly and when used together you can reach native level very quickly. And it's not like I was actively paying attention to it all the time but I made sure it was always playing in the background. I dodged any English encounters that I could like I always had two earbuds in and I made sure that like nobody would accidentally try to talk to me in English. Does this take some level of mental illness to achieve? Absolutely. It's not for everybody, but it's how you take learning as quickly as possible to the extreme. I can confidently say that my biggest improvement in Japanese was when I was doing AJAT, and I definitely recommend it to all the tryhards out there. But just know that the further you push yourself, the harder the burnout will be. However, if you successfully do this consistently for a year, you'll eventually hear words so many times that you'll start thinking in the language. The less exposure you get in your native language, the less reliant you'll become on it, and you'll start to be able to express your thoughts in Japanese. The methods that I laid out basically artificially imitate the way that everybody learns their mother tongue, and you can't really go wrong with it. However, it does take some discipline to do flashcards every day, and AJAT actually takes some mental obsession and like some random form of illness to do successfully. So if you don't want to do that method, just take away from this video that the best way to improve at Japanese is just to constantly be around it. It really doesn't matter how you're around it, like if you want to take language classes or read a textbook, go ahead, but what I laid out to you is the most efficient way by far. I honestly wish like someone told me all of this two years ago. I would have gone by a lot faster. But either way, this is going to take up a lot of your time, and if you have something better to do, then you should probably do that instead of learning Japanese. I've just always wanted to learn Japanese, and I have enough mental illness to go through it even though it's incredibly painful. I've broken down in tears over 15 times. I've cut off relationships just to learn Japanese and I really hated it. Yeah, anyway, most important lesson I learned is from now on I'm going to try to learn my languages through like a neural implant with AI and stuff. That sounds really nice. Um, yeah, subscribe. You'll be fluent in Japanese if you subscribe. I made another channel. Subscribe to that. You'll literally be fluent in like two days.